What's the deal? Kim, why did you give him that 20 bucks? Were you convinced? Did he convince you or did you just give it to him because he came on kind of forcefully? Are you, Kim, Kim, did you, are you 100% sure you gave it to the right guy? I'm not really sure at You're all. You're not 100%. So you, in other words, you just forked it over because Noah came on with a lot of energy. I just don't know what to do. Okay. It's just something to think about. to do. Yeah. Well, that's okay. There's, I don't know that there's the right thing to do. Well, let's get back to the class. Let's get back to where we were at. Okay. So I asked a question right before break. What was the question I asked? Karuna? What if this person was actually really poor and just spent their last pennies on their daughter's wedding. Okay, what would you think about that? Does that change anything? Does that change the way you think about the whole situation? Or are you still going to pocket the money and then give it to a charity of your choice? Well, if this person was really poor, it is sort of, to me, it is sort of like a charity to give it back to them. Okay, well, here's what I'm asking. You initially said that you're not going to try to find the owner, even though we assume you could see the license plate, that you're just going to take that money, you're going to, and then you're going to do what you want with it, which is give it to a charity. Okay, but let's say I was with you, and, and you told me that's what you were going to do, and I said, well, wait a minute. Maybe how do we really know that they're rich? Would that, would me saying that change what you would do, or would you still say, nah, I don't care, they looked rich to me, I'm, I'm pocketing the money and giving I, it to charity? I would try to find them and see if, I don't know, it's just like if they, if I, I don't really know what I'd do because I think if they were really poor, I should give it back. But if they were really rich and I was at their house with their hundred bucks, then they'd probably want it back. Okay. So, okay. All right, let's hear from someone else. Does, the, does that little question I threw out, does that change anything? The fact that I said, how do you know that they're really rich? Does that change the way you view the whole situation, or are you sticking with your original position? Yeah. Noah? It changes the way I view it. Changes it, it okay. That's not why you talk not about these that things. much, though. Not that I much. would I would take down their license plate number, and you'd try to find out. And I try to and I try to find and I'd go I try to find out where they lived, and I'd go by their house and I would check out their house. And you, you guys have a lot of time on your hands. I could say that. Okay, Kim. Well, how I mean, about you? On, on, Kim, does it change the way you thought about it, or or is it still the same? For what it's worth, I, I work five days a week, if you do think I have that much free well, time. Well, no, I'm curious, because I, you're, I mean, you're talking about doing a lot well, of I'm, just, I'm speaking work. theoretically. I mean, okay. I'm not... But, okay. I'm just raising the issues. See? Okay, Kim, how about you? Would it, does, the, does me saying that change anything, or do you still feel the way... Or did you feel like Zach, originally, that you should, no matter who it is, you should try to give the money back? No, not basically, because I think if the per person was kind, saying, please, excuse me, and stuff like that, and then got to the car, and, like, then drove away, I thought that I was a poor person. But if I, like, got the license plate and find out that I'm really rich and stuff like that, I'd probably go give it to charity. Okay. But so you're saying that it's not so much whether they're rich or not, it's that the just maybe because the person was impolite, that that's going to affect whether you pocket their money or not? 
Yeah, that's what okay. I think. That's just okay. me. That's no, I'm, I'm not saying right or wrong. How about you, Forrest? Where do you stand on it? Well, the, as soon as you said that, I was wondering, like, what's, like, you know, I understand that he's going to his daughter's wedding, you know, so he's dressed in nice clothing, but how many poor people do you know who walk around with loose hundreds in their pockets and drive Hummers? I don't know. Like, I, I just asked a question. How do you really know he's rich? Because he's got loose hundreds in his pocket and okay. like, driving a Hummer. Okay. Well, okay, so it doesn't change your position. You're still pocketing the money. Did me saying that make you think about it a little more in a different way? Yes, sort of. Okay. All right, well, that's good because maybe – yeah, go ahead, Zach. How about you? Oh, yeah. I was just going to say that this kind of justified my position because, you it know – justifies your position. I oh. think that we should <laughs> just assume that, that people are, like, good generally. Like, what if he was just having a bad day and that's why I was upset and he, he, like, donated millions of dollars to charity and lived very – Poorly, and he was actually going to he actually had this money on the way to go do charity. I mean, to go give it to a charity, or <laughs> he was like he said, poor, and it was to buy stuff for his daughter's wedding, and he's on his way there. Just, I think that you should just assume the best of people, and, okay. and you should give stuff back and things like well, that. Well, how about him being rude? Well, maybe he's just having a bad day. I mean, okay, or yeah. maybe he got just got bad news. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, and he had to rush to the emergency room. Okay, so this is very interesting. So did anything that Zach just say make you pawn, look at it a little differently? I look at it a little differently, and I, I, do, I do agree with Zach, but it, in, theoretically I agree with Zach. But if the situation was actually happening, I'd probably think to myself, how many people wear nice clothes, are rude to people, and have Hummers that are on call to their exiting of a store? <laughs> okay. So you know, I mean, it just it, the. Okay. I do. So I, I still, do. You're sticking to your original position. I'm no. I, I mean, I'm saying theoretically. Yes, I agree with Zach. I would. I do think it would be best to seek them out. But and you, you, theoretically it would, but in reality you would not. You'd take. Well, I mean, I, there's no way to say what what okay. I would what would happen in, okay. in reality. But so you're not a hundred percent. You'd have to think. About I think it when it I happens. think that the second what I said second would get the best of what I said first. Okay. okay, so you have conflicting impulses. Yeah. Well, that's cool. You know what? Maybe what we just did, what we just did, that little exercise. Maybe that's what Rabbi Akiba meant when he said, now go study. Maybe he meant, go hear what other people think or what other people wrote about a situation because sometimes it's not that simple. Okay, next exercise. Same story, but the person who rudely runs across the sidewalk and drops a hundred is dressed shabbily, they look like they're pretty down and out, and they hop into a beat up old pickup. And you can definitely see the license plate as they drive off. In fact, they don't even get very far. They go 30 yards up the street and they're stopped at a red light. What do you do? We don't need to get in the group for this one. We'll just take turns. Let's start with you, Forrest. What do you do? I think that scenario works out well enough for me to be able to go over there and bring it back. You're going to run down and get, and you're going to run over to that red light and what? Tap on his door and hand him the hundred and say what? Are you going to try and talk me out of it? No, I'm asking you. I just want to clarify. <laughs> Yeah, sure. Okay, you're going to run over and say, excuse me, you dropped 100. Okay, yeah. let's hear what Kim has to say. I'm not really sure. I just asked Kim a weird question <coughs> like this. 
Are you poor? Did you lose a hundred bucks? Like that? Are you poor? And like, okay. I probably wouldn't do it in real life. It's just like a question that popped in my head. And like, okay. hmm, so I wonder if this guy is poor. So and if he was, I'd give it to him. So you're saying, and what if he's, what if he's not poor? What if he said, no, I'm not poor? Well. What are you going to do then? You're going to pocket the hundred? No, I'm not going to pocket the hundred because he looks so like, because if he doesn't say he's poor, he's like in between being rich and poor. Okay, so in other words, you're, you find a $100 bill on the street, you see the car, you run over to the car, and you tap on his w window, he rolls the window down, and what do you say to him? Are you poor? No. What do you say to him? You, you, in the red. What do you say to him? Basically, have you lost a hundred bucks? Okay, you saw him drop the hundred. It's not have you. You saw him drop the hundred. What do you say to him? You, you saw the guy drop the hundred, but before you could say anything, he was in the car and he was driving away. You see he stopped up there. You pick up the hundred. Do, do you agree that you run after him and... Yeah. Do you agree that you tap on his window? Yeah. And then what do you say when he goes, hello, what do you want? Excuse me, I saw you drop a hundred bucks. Okay. Okay. So that's what you do. You don't ask him, are you rich or poor? Yeah. You just give him the hundred. Okay. No, you ask, you ask him a question, basically, and then he, like, he says yes or no, and you give it to him. Wait, what, what's the question that you ask him? I just agree with him, Forrest. You just hand him the hundred. What did Forrest say? What question? <laughs> we, that's all right. I think we know. I think you want to give the guy the hundred, right? You want to give him back his money, drop his money. How about you, Corinna? Um, if I saw a dude drop a hundred or a girl yeah. drop a hundred and then they were stopped at a red light, I would run up and tap on their window and say, like, I saw you drop a hundred bucks. Um, here it is. Okay, how about you, Noah? Before I answer, I would just like to say that I think that all of these questions you are useful to be asked in the society that we live in, but notice that they are all based on money. Okay. And moral, all like morals, our view of morals are based are based on money, and, and I I think that you know with my general idea of spreading as much love as you possibly can, you know that doesn't depend on whether there's money or cars or okay. bikes. It's just about, you know, but yeah. I okay. Would, I, I, I would. Uh, I, I don't know. I think it would be. It, I don't know if my if my interests were in doing the most moral thing. Then yes, I, I would I would chase him down and say, you know, I saw you drop this here. I just want to know what you would do on a yes, on an average I would, day. That's, on an average day, what would that's, you do? That's what I would do. I, I also I think that it, it would be interesting to to let it take its course, to not do anything about it, and just watch and see what happens to the hundred, and see if you know somebody just stops and picks it up and sticks it in their pocket and okay. just kind of keeps walking. You know. Oh, okay, that's cool. Yeah, let's far let Zach make his comment. Zach, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, it's, the, it's the same. You're going to give them back the hundred. Question. Yeah, yeah. I'm give it, do okay, my best we to give all, back the okay. Every mo with a little bit of a okay. So that's interesting. Okay, one more. Yeah, go ahead, Al. Okay. What if? What if in both cases, the guy with the hunter and the poor person? What if you just found out from your mom that she needed surgery and it was a life and death situation? 
<laughs> exactly. Not one penny less or more. You needed $100, and, and you felt like when you got that 100 it was like God or something giving you the money that you could save your mother with it. Go, go ahead, Corinna. What about that? <laughs> so, Does that so change it? Yes or no? I, yes or no. Yeah, yes or no. Are you keeping the money? Or just say I keep it or I give it back. I would keep it. Too. You're keeping it. Okay. I guess the third option is Noah's option. You just leave it on the sidewalk. Okay. Kim, keep it or give it back? Keep it. Keep it. Okay. Noah? In both cases. <laughs> go, go ahead, Noah. Keep it or give it back. Keep it or give it back. Keep it. Keep it. Remember, you don't have much time. The guy stopped at a red light. Go ahead, Zach. You mean we can't raise an extra hundred dollars ourselves? I can't. No, like this. you don't have time to think about that. He's at the red light. Keep it or give it back. And your mom is like about to die in the next thirty minutes. If you don't Keep it or give it back. I'm gonna run over and talk to him. Okay, you're gonna go have a discussion. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Forrest, how about you? Keep it or give it back? Okay. Um, well, I would take it. I would keep it. And, um, keep it, okay. On account of I don't know that person, I know my mom, so okay. I think that sort of helps. Well, well, what changed? Is it the fact that there's a life and death? You had the opportunity to change to save someone's life? I'm sure that poor person in the Hummer can get by. Okay. They'll sell it or something. So, in other words, saving a life, normally you would give it back. Normally you would give it back, but if you could, if you needed that money to save a life, you're keeping it. Does everyone agree with that? Okay. Hi, of course. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Now let's go back. Let's go back to the. Let's go back. Okay, everyone. Lost you all for a minute. Karuna, what? You got something you want to tell everyone, or? Okay, well, let's hear it. I don't think anybody except for Kim will understand it, but I would. I was going to say that I would take it as a sign from Star Clan to save my mother. A sign from who? Star Clan. Sartan, okay. Star Clan, not Sartan. <laughs> okay, that's cool. All right, now, let's go back to the situation where the raggedy person in the beat-up pickup, and we all agreed that we'd give it back, except Noah said that he might just leave it there as a little... I would, I would give it back. I just think that it would be interesting if this, okay. scenario, if this scenario was a, was a reoccurring scenario, okay. that it would be interesting to... Like if you were leave. a filmmaker or something, you'd or you were just study, Or you were just laying $100 bills out to study what okay. people do... Yeah, I think okay. Be... Here's a, okay. Here's another scenario. You pick up the hundred. You start running after the pickup who stopped at the red light, and you notice that on the back window is a big Confederate flag. Oh man! <laughs> and on the bumper sticker is a a Bush Cheney sticker. Okay. Does that Change anything for you. Let's start with Zach this time. Zach, what do you do? I think we should start with Noah this time. No, no, so come angry. on, Zach. You, you got to think quick. Remember, the light is red for only about 30 seconds. Yeah, I, I'm just going to go with the whole assume the best thing. I mean, it's like if a bum comes up and like, hey, can I have some okay. change? I mean, maybe he's going to go spend it on drugs or something. Okay. Or like go to the liquor store and buy booze. But okay, so you're hand, giving it back. You're giving it back, okay, Noah. So borrowing the car. Ne Noah, you give um, it back, or do you change your mind when you see the stickers? I would be compelled to change my mind. But okay. If I was, if I was of a moral mind at the time, then yes, I would give him back his money, assuming the best. Okay. How about you, Karuna? You giving it back? Yeah. Give it back. I'm not really sure. 
you're not sure. Okay, you're undecided. Well, if you're if you're undecided for too long, and you don't write his number down, then you're keeping it because he's well, gone. Yeah, I would write his number down. I just didn't know what to do with it right then because of the stickers, and I'd be like. Should I give it? Should I not give it? Should I give it for like 30 seconds? Okay. But before okay. I do that, I get okay. his number. So then you're just going to write his number and think about it. How about you, Forrest? What are you doing? I go to his car. I knock on the window. I tear the hundred in half. I give it to him, call him a Nazi, and run like hell. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Those are very good answers. And now I want to read... I want to read you guys something. This is from a book called Lo Loving Every Child. This is by a guy named Janos Korchak. And this is a famous man who ran an orphanage for many years in Poland. And he ran an orphanage for Jewish children in Poland before World War II. And when the German army came into Poland, they rounded him up in all the orphans and they moved them into the ghetto. Do you guys know about that? And then eventually they took them all to the concentration camp. And Janusz, Janusz Korszak was a... He's written a lot of books, and he was world-renowned as an educator and a children's advocate. And he had the, when he was in uh, the ghetto, the resistance uh, fighters, the people who were resisting the Nazis, came to him, and because he was such a prominent guy, they said, we can smuggle you out. They had connections outside. And they said, we can smuggle you out. And he refused to go. And he stayed with his kids. But anyway, I want to read you something that he wrote. They might, may have. I'm not aware of it. Okay, I'm going to read you something. I want you to hear this. Okay. Any child is an unequivocal Democrat and does not recognize hierarchies. Okay, does everyone know what that means? What, what's the definition? What, what, do, you, what do you think he was using for Democrat? A Democrat. An, um, I would say he means fair-minded. They look at Everybody is equal. That's what I think he means. He says, every child, any child is an unequivocal. That means, unequivocal means 100%. Democrat. And does not recognize any hierarchies. Do you know what hierarchies mean? What's it mean? What's hierarchies mean? Uh, okay, right. Does everyone does everyone agree with that? That that's basically it. Okay. Okay. So it maybe I think it kind of means both, but it means kind of, to me it means divisions amongst people. Okay, ways of dividing and classifying. In fact, he does he he doesn't even mean. Listen to the rest of what he said. Whether it is another child's hunger or the agony of a tormented animal, it causes him pain. Dogs, birds, butterflies, and flowers are equally close to his heart, and he feels kinship with each pebble and shell. He, he or she does not believe that only humans have souls. Do you think that... that is that true what he says? That children don't recognize hierarchies? Yes. 
I think children's I think children are conditioned at an amazingly young age in this society to recognize hierarchies. Okay, how about you, Zach? What do you think? Do children recognize hierarchies? Not until they're taught to. Not until they're taught to. How about you, Karuna? Do children recognize hierarchies? I wasn't picking my nose. I agree with Zach. Okay. Kim, how about you? You agree with that? I also agree with Zach. And Forrest? Um, they might not understand what it is until they learn the meaning of what a hierarchy is until they, but then when they learn the term, they may look back and realize all the ugly okay. people. Okay, here's a question. Do you guys recognize hierarchies? Or do you have the mind of a child that doesn't recognize hierarchies? What do you think? Let's start with Kim. Do you recognize, do you classify people in groups? Or what do you think about that? Do you recognize hierarchies or do you try to treat everyone as an unequivocal Democrat? I just don't realize demic I mean hierarchies. I'm sorry? I don't realize um You're not sure what it means? I know what hierarchies mean. Uh, I just don't s see it when I look at a person. I just treat them as I treat my best friend. Okay. Okay, so you're saying you're like a child. You you don't really classify people in the... You're going to treat people the right way, in a good way. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. That's like a Native American expression, in a good way. Okay, how about you, uh, Karuna? Do you, are you like the child in here that is an unequivocal Democrat and does not recognize hierarchies? Well, it depends on what you mean by recognize. Like, I can... Do you base your actions and the way you uh, deal with other people or even or other animals or other creatures be based on some hierarchy that some deserve better treatment than others? Or um, are you an unequivocal Democrat? I don't think some diver deserve better than others but like at my house I'm I like I make sure that I'm the alpha of like a group of three like if it, if there was a group of three dogs I'd be the alpha and then my puppies would be like okay. they'd just be my puppies okay. <laughs> all right yeah. yeah okay how about you Noah um, are you still like a child who is an unequivocal yeah, Democrat, I really, or, do you, or do you recognize hierarchies? I, by, by my definition, I do recognize hierarchies, but the way that you described it, I, I don't. Okay. I don't base my actions on the letters before somebody's name or the, their qualifications or anything, but I do, you know, I associate a difference between, you know, me and my father or, okay. you know, but that doesn't affect my actions towards him. Okay. Or at least it doesn't consciously affect my actions towards okay. him. Okay, cool. Okay, Zach, how about you? Yeah, I pretty much agree with Noah. Okay. Sure. I think that I treat other, I think that I treat things as equals but I like but I sort of I recognize and slightly create hierarchies okay okay how about uh, Forrest what do you think where do you come down on that I, I don't if you did I forget so would you mind repeating it um, what's the question again the question is, I read that statement. Here, I'll read it again. Any child is an unequivocal Democrat and does not recognize any hierarchies. Yeah, I already said something about that. Oh, okay. Yeah. And it was... I said that thing about, like... Or, wait. I said something about recognizing 
Okay. It, but, uh, okay. Um, I don't have anything to say about it. Okay. Well, okay, I'm going to make an observation here that uh, I think you guys, everyone kind of, yeah, you said that you don't recognize hierarchies till you're taught to. Well, no, not, no, that was him. Okay, that was that, right? I said that um, you, you can spot out, like, um, you can see a hierarchy, but you don't know what to call it. I think when he says recognize, he, he doesn't mean just that you observe it, but that you, it guides your actions. Uh-huh. Just observe it and understand it. Okay. Doesn't affect you. Okay. Well, we're getting close to the end, and we're going to wrap this up. Now, look, I want to give you guys something to think about because the reason I read that is because I found in our discussions of these moral dilemmas and how you were going to deal with these situations that some people had a set thing to do that they thought was the right thing regardless of who the person was. Other people had recognized a hierarchy in that they would behave in a certain way if one type of person or what they thought based on appearance was one type of person and then they would behave differently um, based on what they thought was another type of person. And then when I threw in the uh, bush sticker, it even changed it again a little bit. So that's what I would call recognizing hierarchy. So I think that's something that's interesting to reflect on because everyone here said that you think like a child who doesn't recognize those things. Because like a little kid, a little kid, would you all agree, wouldn't look at whether the person was rich or poor or had a bush sticker. He'd give him the money, right? If he was a good kid, he'd probably say, Mister, you dropped the money. Is that true? Like a little... So who taught you guys to recognize those hierarchies? That's something to think about for, uh, just for the heck of it. And guess what, guys? I thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Hope you enjoyed the class.